Chapter 12, The Story of a Lovely Lady who has three very lovely girls, and each one with hair of gold, just like the other in girls. This is the story of a man named Brady, who had three boys of his own. And then, then this fella met this lady, and they thought it was more than a bunch. And that's how they became the Brady Bunts. No, I've never watched that show. <laughs> Discord, may I ask something? The Quagga said just finished showing Fluttershy his water skating skills. It was drying off. Anything, my dear, he said over his shoulder. She looked down at the blanket she was sitting on. Well, I've been here for three weeks, and... He made his towel disappear and teleport to her side. Yes. Well, there's something that's been on my mind, and... He scooted closer to her. Go on. I, I just want to know. A ray of hope appeared on Discord's face. Was he finally going to say it? But she said it was a question. Still, was this it? She looked up out. Where did you come from? And his expressive fell. Oh, I see. Well, my dear, when a male Dracarcus and a female Dracarcus fall in love. That's not what I meant. He sighed. I know. I warn you. It's not a cheery tale. Where should I lay onto her belly? I'm listening. This car smiled and took a breath. I wasn't always the only one of my kind. I had a mother and father, like every creature had. There was a land filled with Jaconaquai, but there were very few of us even then. I was only a few hours old when it happened. What happened? He paused. It's all a blur. All I remember is lots of snow and ice. It must have been a normal weather, if not even the Jaconaquai could control it. At some point, I got separated from my parents, and I woke up one morning to find myself in a cave. I survived on chocolate milk and cotton candy. Our magic starts at an early age, you see. After a while, the blizzard ended, and I started off on my own. He made another pause before continuing. I'll spare you the details. Let's just say it didn't take long for me to realize that I was different from most creatures. I searched everywhere for other draconiquai, but found none. When I figured I was the only one left, I tried to fit in with the other animals, but they were either frightened of me or found me ridiculous. Then I found Equestria and your ponies, and, well, let's just say they didn't take kindly to my appearance either. I eventually grew up trying to fit in and focused on my magic, making myself at home in the cave in the mountains. Was it the cave he took me from? Fleshy interjected, yes. In fact, you know, Celestia had stopped by there several times to see if I was hiding there. I made myself invisible whenever she came. How did she know you were there? Because she found me there. You know, before her die job. She saw me practicing my magic, and I might add, she was quite impressed. She said I should use my talents for good. Well, he twiddled his fingers. She wasn't very specific on the definition of good. He gave a small laugh. <laughs> I guess I may have disturbed a few banquets. It rained a couple of parades. It was after I accidentally turned the roads into soap, and lots of police called me a freak. That thing's got out of hand. You know, I don't like being called a freak. You know, Celestia was angry with me. I just got angry back. So I took over Equestria, and well, you know the rest. First I was silent for a while. What was it like being a stone? He hesitated. Cold, dark. Are you still aware of your surroundings? I heard those comments from the tourists. My head's not like a donkey's. Did it hurt? The stone, I mean. Not physically, though I've had my share of defacers, graffitis, and pigeons. At least Celestia had the decency to have me washed once a week. If only I had someone to scratch my nose. He trailed off and stared off into space. You really are alone, aren't you? Discord looked down at her. Yes, yes I was. Not anymore, now that you're here. He used his tail to bring her closer, making flares very blessed. You know, I don't even remember what they look like. He said suddenly, my parents. I don't remember a thing about them. First, I hung her head. Well, I don't have parents either. <laughs> now, now, now. <laughs> we mustn't laugh because of layer the film is in the series. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. 
We wasn't, let that deter anything. I know. <laughs> Is Cecily gonna go sick? <laughs> I know. <laughs> you looked there with wide eyes. In all those years of spying, how could you miss that detail? What happened? Her lip quivered. I never knew my father. And mother passed away a few years ago. She looked up at him. I suppose we're more alike than we thought. Oh, by the way, there's my mom and dad now. Hi, mom and dad. Hi, honey. We love you. Discord gate, we are. You see, she glanced down at her host. I was a very shy fellow. He could barely fly. All the other ponies laughed at me. Especially because my parents kept disappearing every five minutes. He choked. <laughs> they laughed at you. Tell me their names. I shall make them suffer. She so giggled. Don't do that. That was a long time ago. Anyway... I know what it's like to be different. I know how lonely that can be. She paused. Also, I was almost turned to stone by a cockatrice. You what? How did you escape? Well, my stare. He blinked seriously. You stared down a cockatrice? Um, uh, yes. First I squeaked as he threw his arms around her. Beauty, grace, talent and a stare to the falls of the laws of nature. You're just a whole package, aren't you? She gently tried to push him away. Discard, please. Did you not hear me, darling? I'm saying you're perfect. Your cheeks turned red. Discord. Is there something in your ear? He stuck his claw in her ear. Let's see. Discord, where are you? See, so guess as he pulled out a red, thornless rose. Well, a rose is a rose. Hey, no references to the previous fix we've done on this channel. Especially ones that I don't even think everybody's red. Oh, you're right. Well, you look at that. No wonder you couldn't hear. Hmm. Almost as beautiful as the pony it came from. First I stared at the flower as he placed it in her hose. It's lovely. She said in healing the scent. It's nothing compared to you. After all, look at rival your beauty. She stiffened as he laid his hands on her shoulders. It whispered in her ear. Nothing, that's what. She laughed nervously. That's really flattering and all, but... Come now, my dear. Why do you think I'm so intent on making you mine? But I already agreed to... You know what I mean. Well, this is why I'll ask again. Do you love me, Fluttershy? Well, maybe if you did in a rock song. There it was. She so could have known it was coming. He'd been more persistent lately. Last night, he had prepared a candle at dinner before asking. She turned to face him and was unsure what to say. She so didn't know what was wrong with her. Usually, she would say no immediately. But it had become harder and harder for her to say it. Hopeful look on his face made even more difficult. So he glanced back at the rose. It had been a sweet gesture. And the poor dear had been all alone all his life. How could he reject her after hearing all of that? Was that why he had told it to her? Was he taking advantage of her pity? Was any of it true? He, shouldn't, he would not lie to her, would he? Turned out, Flores, I knew he was lonely. And he seemed to care for her, but he could not do it. Because he might as well be saying, I do at the altar. She was not ready. Flores, I shut her eyes. No discord. The Crocus moved away from her. Flares I saw the twist in his eye. Are you alright? Oh, don't worry about me. He created his teeth just perfect. I was this close! Discord shot to his mirror. This close! I tried to be nice. Tell her my secrets. I say he sees the most beautiful creature on this planet repeatedly. He still rejects me! He pounded on the glass. What am I doing wrong? He gazed at his reflection, waiting for it to talk back, but continued to copy his moments. He got outside. Be days of discord. You got somewhere with that pony. So say fence, yes, eventually. You just need to up your approach. The next day, when Flareside was feeding the birds, she looked up in the sky to see riding it. Do you love me? Discord appeared two seconds later with a bouquet of tulips in his paw. For a while, she did nothing but glance between him, the tulips, and the message. Then she solemnly shook her hand. The following evening, Discord laid two deck chairs on the balcony, creating a fireworks display. Fireside was in awe until the same question exploded in the sky. Looking at his expected face, she was almost compelled to say yes. Or on Constance said no, but she could not find the courage to say er either. When she turned away from him, Discord did not need to hear the answer and sank sadly into his chair. Next morning, she found another bouquet of tulips and a heart-shaped box in front of the door. In her bouquet was the note reading, Only the most beautiful flowers for the most beautiful ponies. She sat on the bed. Opened the box to reveal some chocolates and another note. 
Do you love me? Society falls and allows another to fall. Does not materialize behind her? Arms crossed as face filled with frustration. How long do I have to wait? She looked up at him in alarm. Discord. How long? She choked on her words. I, I. Have you lost all knowledge of speech that you can't even say a polite no anymore? Discord, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He said, mimicking her voice. How many times are you going to say that? That's my 2000th birthday. Tears are developing in her eyes. I can't, I just... Do you not like it here? No, I... Is the castle too drafty? Uh, is it my breath? Yes. Oh, I get it. It's my looks, isn't it? Or is it my age? Do you prefer some handsome young stallion, right? I just too different for you, huh? Discord! First I says, Your looks have nothing to do with this. Then why? He demanded. I've given you everything you can want. I swallowed my pride for you. I told you things I've never told any pony. He picked up the bouquet. Why? Why do you still reject my affections? Because you treat me like a prisoner? His face fell as he sat down. Fireside then took a breath and moved towards the window. I understand you don't want me to leave, and now we had a deal. But if you were really my friend, you wouldn't keep me like a caged bird. You tried so hard to make me happy, but you still deny me the one thing I want. She so glanced down as some of her birds tried to fly into the forest, but stopped by the forest field. Now I'm treating my friends the same way. She so hung her head saying, this car continued to hold on to his anger. Well, you denied me the one thing I want. What I want is... His frustration melted away when he saw tears streaming down her cheeks. Constantly said towards her, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... I only touched her mane, only have her pull away. Fluttershy. She faced him. I want to let them go. He blinked, what? Fluttershy glanced back at the owls inside. Be selfish with me to keep them here. They're not here because they need me. I thought he did, but I just wanted to be here for myself. This girl put a claw on his shoulder. That's why I brought them here, for you. And now I want you to send them back. But don't they make you happy? Look at them. They don't want to stay here. That's why you had to send them back. He stared at her for a while, wiping away her tears. You sure this is what you want? She looked up at him and nodded.